Hi, how's it in the name of Jesus Christ? How are you doing? It's your girl Cran Cake Carabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party. Is that just not the story of our lives? Today is the 12th of November 2024. And I did not want to come to record, but look at me be here anyway. Because uh, I was severely demonically attacked last night. And I imagined that I could just ignore it and go through, go by my day with nothing at all giving. Uh, but I was just too burdened and I have not to come share. So I'm here. The um, topic of today is they think they think I'm a lost cause because they think a world like this is sustainable they think I'm a lost cause and then there's like a little cow over them they think a world and then there's like a globe like this is sustainable then there's like three little monkeys like basically a circus there goes the dog it's been quiet the whole day and as soon as I start talking here it starts to bark because there is something very satanic going on right now. Anyway, listen. <sighs> the demonic abuse is on another level. It's just astro, astro, astronomical. And it's made me flat like a banana peel on the floor. I forgot something, whoops, and I'm bringing it forward. My septum. I like it. There it is. Okay. You know, people in the occult, I'm sorry for blowing my nose in front of you. It is what it is. People in the occult are like suicide bombers or a man that is angry at his wife. Not angry, sorry, but disillusioned, whatever. Like, she's asking for a divorce, or he's just not. He's going to prison, or he's bankrupt, and his life is over. He owes the world everything. And then he decides to grab a... <sighs> and then he decides to grab a gun. And basically end his life alongside his wife and four children. People in the occult are like that when they're, <clears throat> sorry, at the end of themselves. People in the occult are like that when they're at the end of themselves. I did a video yesterday speaking about how there's about to be a whole bunch of people dying because they're standing in front of the gospel message. And not just the gospel, just in totality in general, but the words that are shared by those that are prophesying concerning future events that are going to earmark either the run-up to the rapture or what's going to happen after the rapture in the tribulation. I spoke about how it is that death is coming to those standing in the way of saints. Last night, yes, like it, but I tried to sleep and I, I, I just, I was wrestled and jostled and made severely depressed and suicidal all the way up until around 5 5 half past 5 6 a.m. in the morning then only was I able to sleep but I was jostled and I told myself that I am not going to wake up I'm not doing it I am not I'm not robbing myself of sleep I will dream this I will go through it because I know they're desperate um they're desperate and Whatever it is that is the impression by a demonic entity on my chest to make me feel more miserable than I am, I recognize it for the spiritual thing that it is. And I knew that by morning I will conquer and I'll be able to sleep a sweet sleep when I'm finally able to sleep and that indeed did happen. It's written in God's word that we must demolish arguments and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above, exalts itself above the knowledge of the Most High and hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. I am encircled by former friends, family members, essentially people who adored themselves some Satan, alright, that would love to imagine me as a lost cause. Basically, somebody that I, we tried, don't know what else to do over here. They're trying to scare me and freak me out into thinking that I'm a lost cause and nothing is ever going to give where I'm concerned. 
but herein lies the deal okay here's the reality of the circumstance right now if i'm a lost cause what the heck there's no world left there's nothing left to work on anymore and indeed that's exactly what god is verifying there's no world left to live in if i'm a lost cause if there's nothing coming for me if there's no one coming for me if there is no hope for me we're done for all of us because i've literally been the only voice of sobriety for a whole decade in my entire social circle or at least what used to be my social circle i'm the only one that did not make like a monkey see monkey do and just start casting spells on everybody i'm the only one that did not look left and right around me and see that other people were destroying other people's lives so hey let me just join the bandwagon i'm the only essentially what would be the ten amount of sober person sane person not crazy person in their room and they say that i'm the lost cause what the heck kind of barbaric society is that where everybody is bewitching everybody and they are threatening everybody to basically settle or else that's not on earth that's why i keep on saying that y'all the world is ending but anyway listen right next to all this demonic attack bombardment on my person sitting on my chest trying to take my life right next to that was me seeing a plethora like just a vision after vision after vision after vision because i was in and out of sleep because i was being jostled i was being wrestled in my sleep because of demonic attack right i was being jostled i was being wrestled i was being bullied essentially by entities and sorry i broke my fast that's how much i just don't care right now i broke my fast for today i'm probably going to be fasting again tomorrow so there's a little bit of like sandwich in my teeth a peanut butter and jam with coney rolls and we're happy mm. so if i'm busy still chewing i'm sorry you know what happens anyway whatever yeah I got vision after vision after vision slept like while I was sleeping I would come out of sleep and every time I would come out of sleep because I'm being jostled by some entity it's out here yanking my chains I don't know how many dangling legs of women I saw yes ladies dangling legs swinging left to right hung on a noose at their own hands I have the spirit of the living God. I'm indwelt by Jesus, by the Holy Spirit. So that which entangles around me, trying to take me out. Every so often gets conquered by the spirit of God and I come out on the other side right as rain. But you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're a circus of barbarians monkey see monkey do you just keep on casting spells i initially thought that those dangling legs of women on a noose hanging were me because i'm being threatened with suicide curses all over the show i thought it was me but when i finally woke up because remember i was struggling to sleep and then i would be in and out of sleep blah blah when i finally did wake up later on in the day when the sun was all out and everything the lord made a clear an impression on my chest alongside a word of knowledge that was quite audible he said it's them they're about to die in their numbers and they're gonna take themselves out i did a video yesterday i warned you in yesterday's video i'm tired of coming here to speak these messages i'm exhausted frankly like i'm just tired you know but whatever don't nobody care that i'm tired don't nobody care don't nobody care don't nobody care but um doesn't matter that you don't care because soon i'm gonna be relieved the lord was telling me that y'all are about to in your numbers 
end your own lives because of precisely this very epidemic of crazy that you all are enduring each other through go on tiktok there's so many little men out here wearing women's clothes and apparently this is normal so many men doing skits as women wearing wigs wearing clothes of women so many people telling stories of witchcraft babies being killed in people's wombs from the from like remotely pregnancies being miscarried by witches because uh, somebody posted on their social media that they're pregnant and then a witch out here killing the baby in the stomach and telling the story on social media just a brazen you know glory it's written in god's word that their god is their belly and they glory in shame okay go on tiktok and listen to people's story times about how they did this and that and they 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 cheated on their husband with four colleagues and they don't know what to do should they forget should, should they um confess basically just the, like the world is just rampant with a circus type of antic there's just a cornucopia of darkness on the ground that is literally unprecedented and people are glorying in it their god is their belly they glory in shame and people are glorying in the circus and it is therefore no wonder that you think that i am a lost cause for wagging my head at the circus for looking at it like whoa how's this even the world i just keep getting dreams of people that are professing christians out here being completely shunned by god yet proud with their chins in the sky in churches giving speeches officiating over weddings calling themselves men or women of god gushubi like guys it's what i'm getting at like gushubi and elokshuba loku you you literally there are people sitting around imaginative that if you can't beat them join them if you ca if you can't beat them join them okay so i must go and miscarry a pregnancy of a woman who is carrying the baby of a guy that i have a crush on because she posted something on of her pregnancy on facebook because if you can't beat him join him i gotta go and grab the pic of a baby a newborn baby on social media and put needles on the face of that baby do a voodoo chant because that baby just so happens to be my husband's nazis baby my husband's mistress's baby so i'm gonna go and kill a baby i don't have a husband but of course it's a hypothetical story right must i go and download people's photos on facebook and just start scratching on them scratching on them putting x marks the spot on their faces to essentially neutralize their futures in a satanic ritual because if you can't beat them join them if if i can't beat that witchcraft if i can't beat that circus that people are in i gotta join them and allegedly apparently that is the thing that makes me a lost cause when i say no thank you when i say i'm not doing it when i say i will not join the bandwagon of crazy <laughs> I'm, I'm called a lost cause by people who out here got 
photographs of people in a box that they have put Tabasco sauce on to burn their eyes so that they can't see properly spiritually in the waking space. People that have put cigarette burns in photographs of people so that whatever it is that they consume in life will always just voza out from their stomachs because you burned a cigarette hole into the torso of a person in a photo so that represents that everything they eat will never ever nourish their bodies in other words everything they try in life is just gonna fall apart like i must just keep doing stuff like i must like have some funny little shoebox chilling in my house of all the people that I've held hostage. And some kind of a safe in my house because it represents everyone that I have held hostage. There is a guy that I used to have a crush on. I thought he was my future husband. Thank God that did not give. That I had a dream of last night. Atata what would be an effigy representing me to make sure I will always be just restrained and unable to move <laughs> left or right and then my life is going to look just like this and apparently if I don't bewitch myself out of those ropes I'm a lost cause if I don't bewitch him so, he, so that I would be set free from him I'm a lost cause if I don't bewitch my former best friend, my cousins, my sisters, my mom, like if I don't just basically eye for an eye tooth for a tooth with witchcraft, I, whoops girl, I guess you're gonna die because hoso, <laughs> hoso, it's like that. The world is like that, Mus. <sighs> How in the world do you freaking believe that? How under heaven in the world do you believe that Josualu? You can't be that nefarious and think that the world is at the mercy of whatever trashy thing you are. Like you literally cannot believe that I'm a lost cause. You are lying to yourselves and the reason why therefore you are determined to kill me with suicide is because deep down inside of those dark, ugly, ugly, dingy hearts of yours, you know that this is not going to end well for you. <laughs> In a world where you thoroughly are of the imagination that people like me are lost causes, honey, you're living in some debilitated lost cause mindset to your the lost cause just because there's a whole bunch of you does not mean that the minority that are still sober are lost causes they're just being bullied by crazy people but this is not the walking dead guys this is not resident evil <laughs> this is not some dystopian science fiction or horror movie where zombies freaking reign. Where they ultimately overwhelm and overrun a city. Johannesburg is not Raccoon City. In the Resident Evil, I am not Michonne, or Rick, or Daryl in The Walking Dead. I am a human being living on an earth whose beginning and end has been written down, jotted as on a piece of paper by the God of the universe. And guess how this does not end. This does not end in a zombie apocalypse. I truly do apologize grunting men and women who have no sentiency remaining in you, lacking any moral cognition at all. I, I am, I'm really sorry that the utopian dystopia because it's utopian for you to be so dystopian yeah the utopian dystopia that you're living in i'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news it, it it's not the way that this whole machine stops working this whole machine does not get all rusty and stops running because you're evil and so therefore you take over all the good in the world and then you refashion it in your own image I'm going to tell you how this, this rather ends, even though I'm sick and tired of saying it every single day because I, I, I just keep repeating myself. But it is what it is. That's just the nice thing about being a teacher, right? 
apt to teach mm, that's what the bible says doing the work of an evangelist you have to do revision and just keep reiterating the same points time and time again because every so often there are children in the class that are just hard of hearing that are thick morons that can't grasp basic concepts the world can not linger in this level of dystopia without its creator bringing a dead break to whatever trash you are i'm gonna read you from the book of isaiah to understand what's rather gonna happen okay what's up over there guess what i'm happy about there's been construction work ding over the past couple of days and it's been rough i've been peeing in a bucket and it's sucked the construction work has been in the bathroom the toilet is working again everything flushes and i'm able to sit there for 10 hours releasing stools because that's where fecal matter belongs in a toilet not just rolled on your walls used as painting and then anticipate that people are not going to realize that it stinks yeah, you guys are like ones grabbing your fecal matter and painting the walls with it and expect people to imagine your house smells of roses. You're populating the earth with feces and it stinks. But the Lord is like a wonderful construction worker that Archer builds a toilet and says that's where feces belong. And responsible people use a toilet, flush it, that, you know, stenches may go to where it is that stenches go. But when you live with waste material and excrement in your houses, I'm sorry, herein lies the deal. Your landlord is going to kick you out. Authorities, health inspectors are going to be like you are unhealthy for the neighborhood. So we're going to have to surveil you until you get this cleaned. Otherwise, we're going to bulldoze this house, put it to the ground because it's a health risk for even your neighbors. Essentially, the God who created this world for you to chill in made it for you to go out there and enjoy it he made the world and said that oh it's good like proper the lord built the earth he made the earth he manufactured as he manufactured it as in a factory and then when he was done he was like oh it's good he said it is good like literally he thought the world was good you don't get to trash it and then him just stand stand back it's his masterpiece it's his it's his artwork it's his statue of david as michelangelo do you understand it is written in god's word in uh, Revelation, I think 11, 18 or 18, 11, I stand corrected. That the Lord is going to destroy those who destroy the earth. <laughs> he is going to destroy those who destroy the earth. That's what happens in the end of things. That, that's how this ends. This is not a, di it does not result in a dystopian nightmarish situation where zombies are ruling the world. There is a saying in, um, in the walking dead the one with rick michonne and all that jazz mm, that this here world belongs to the walkers we just live in it this world belongs to the zombies the rotters we're just living in it i do apologize it's never gonna get there things are never gonna get to a point where sober men and sober women who use bathrooms in order to ablute their bodies and flush down stools down toilets responsibly therefore getting rid of excrement in ways that are hygienic mm. the day is never going to arrive when you overrun the earth so much that such men and such women will have nowhere to put their feet down anymore uh, and so therefore just have to deal with the fact that oh guess what this is the world of the zombies which is living in it this is the world of the zombies which is living in it it's the day is not coming that will ever be like that where such activity will be left unfettered i am sick and tired of repeating myself but you know whatever it is what it is we're just going to uh, carry on here hoping to do a different thing tomorrow but we'll see i want to help you understand how this rather ends uh because there is a grand amount of confusion in these streets obviously clearly like duh and i'm here to smooth it out again wicked men and women so you can start using a toilet so that you can start flushing stools so that you can start washing your hands after such activity as that so that you can start buying aerating aerosols to get rid of the stench that's in there and so you can start scrubbing down stains when they're there wiping down kitchen counters when there's breadcrumbs on there essentially so you can start being clean 
get on a mission to get your bodies obluted do a better thing because right now there is a filth in the sky and it is rising up to the heavens reaching the stench it is up the nostrils of a holy god that in his righteous indignation is very simply going to fumigate this is our world correction this is rather what's true you are just living on it do you understand mm. i'll say that again this here planet belongs to the christians you are just living in it when you're evil it's written in god's word in romans 8 i imagine that creation groans to see us revealed creation groans to see the sons of god revealed do you want to know why creation groans because the human race is futile they don't honor their god their maker they don't also honor what god gave them to dwell on they don't appreciate what they've been given they think that they've got another earth to go they, they, they think that this earth is more of them where they came from you think that the ability to land your feet down on a pavement and you not sink into the center of the earth is a guaranteed advantage that you will just inevitably enjoy for the rest of your days. You imagine the breath in your lungs that you easily cock at even when you're sleeping without thinking it comes second nature for you to breathe. You think it's guaranteed. You think that beating heart is also guaranteed. You imagine that blood coursing through your veins is also guaranteed to continue to do that without being exsanguinated. You are of the vile imagination that you have to be suffered by a holy god but you see creation has a bone to pick with all that pomp creation has a bone to pick with all that arrogance of human beings who imagine that tomorrow is guaranteed a heartbeat is up their sleeves right up there with all the favors they pull in with the municipal government in order to ruin innocent people's lives in the municipality you think that just in the same way that you can cast a spell today and go eat breakfast tomorrow, the Lord God Almighty will necessarily also watch you do a strange thing and let you live tomorrow. Creation sees all that cray cray and is like, goodness, like, whoa. I mean, if creation had a nose, it would pinch it and be like, oh. If creation had a temple it would i uh, just scratch it wondering what's going on if creation had a forehead it would crease it just looking at you like you're weird if creation had a head it would wag it left and right on some what's going on over here but as it stands creation is kind of an animate right now looking at you through atoms in matter and it's just frazzled by how under heaven it is that you lack respect for your maker you lack respect for the fact that you have got breath in your lungs food in your stomach and just basic decency for a general existence you are enjoying the common grace of god but look at you go out you're squandering the earth that god gave you to dwell on out you're blowing steam over innocent people as if though they had it coming out you're massacring babies orphans out you're massacring widows out you're massacring innocents in the street men trying to go about their business honestly working by the sweat of their brow look at you be an interruption to that peace yeah. well it's written in god's word and i'm gonna read right now from isaiah 26 that god keeps him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts him our minds are stayed on God even though we look around and there's nothing but calamity just flailing its hands in the sky like it's Aaliyah waving them around like they just don't care mm. even when Cray Cray is flailing, flailing its hands in the sky like that y'all uh, creation and its maker look at that on some TikTok okay Yo, your time is five, four, three, two. Your time is up. Creation is here with you. Enough is enough. Enough. For you to think that I here am the lost cause. What the heck? Creation is on my side. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. Creation is on my side. Creation groans to see the sons of God revealed. Why? Why does creation groan to see daughters and sons of God revealed? Eh? Because we're the only people that are successful, rightful, and responsible stewards of the earth. 
The earth we've been given, we appreciate the dust of it. We appreciate every blade of grass. We are grateful for the sun that pierces through the window in the morning, letting us know that it's time to wake up. We basically are thankful to a holy God for helping us along in this thing called life. And so therefore giving acknowledgement to our creator, creation looks at us every morning, equally yawning like a person that's just woken up from a beauty sleep and is like, ah, oh, that's my girl. Ah, oh, that's my boy. That's what I'm talking about. Look at Carabo, man. That's what humanity is about. They were made to worship God and she got it. And so too does Temba on the left and so too does Cassandra on the right. But look at that random deadbeat lackluster Spusiso. Out here wake up first thing in the morning and after drinking a sip of coffee he's already on Facebook downloading a picture of an ex-girlfriend so that he can bewitch it in his voodoo shrine. But as creation, my hands are tied. All I can do is just chill around, watch him do a strange thing all day, every day, until God says it's time. But frankly, I'm impatient. So because I'm impatient, I groan, I grumble, I burp, I cause an earthquake. I groan, I grumble, I burp, I am a hurricane. I groan, I grumble, and I burp, I am a shaking and a quiver. I am something that is disquieting. I'm extreme rain. I'm extreme snow. I'm extreme cold. I am just going to continue to be bad, bad, bad weather because what the heck is Wusiso doing today? I mean, we are all subjugated to the tyranny of what Cray Cray Si Busisu is. Why? Because until such time that Wusiso is eliminated, scrapped from the face of the earth. Yeah. Creation will keep on quaking, therefore causing all of our buildings to fall on all of our innocent babies. Essentially, we all pass away by collateral damage as a result of the wonderful feats of Spusiso. Crazy people cause tsunamis, you don't understand. Crazy people cause earthquakes, like literally like the butterfly effect, chaos theory, disambiguation, reaching unto entropy, wicked men and women, you are the reason why the earth is grumbling, groaning, shaking, and quivering. You are the reason why we can't have peace, and you're the reason why babies die young. You're the reason why anyone gets cancer. You are literally the reason why everything gotta die, where nothing lasts forever. I'm sorry, everything is supposed to last forever, but things not come to a blistering end why because you are here they come to a blistering end because you are here oh sibu sisu and your lackluster general demeanor creation groans to see the sons of god revealed because we worship god as we ought and creation therefore is happy to just let us be but there are more of you than there are of us who honor the god of the universe and so therefore creation will quake even underneath the floor of a person that is out here worshiping Jesus Christ. We are literally getting knocked out by collateral damage and okay? cam. But thank God when that person in an earthquake in Turkey out here passing away despite loving God, thank God when their silver cord is cut, they go to heaven. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Then one day they're gonna watch the Hunger Games down here in these streets and be like, finally I get satiated for all of my indignation for being killed in an earthquake, killed in an earthquake, yeah that consumed my whole house, me and all my children and my wife, we died all in one sitting because of that earthquake, came to heaven much too soon, we are glad to be here, but I've got a bone to pick with the fact that I died unjustly at the hands of mad creation because of Jabu. Because I mean, Jabu just would not stop with his witchcraft. He just would not stop fornicating, he wouldn't stop raping. So I had to die with all my kids. Lord hates unequal scales. He will recalibrate them their form. Lord can't stand the acquittal of the right, the, the wicked, and also the condemnation of the righteous. But right now there is this discombobulated, unjust earth that is out here, making martyrs under the altar lament on some. When are you going to avenge our blood? Christians in heaven are still out here being upset about the fact that they were unjustly executed, they were killed, they were done dirty, and they never got justice in their lifetime. The day of comeuppance is rocking up any minute now. It's knocking on the door like an uninvited and unexpected police officer. Out here about to tell you that your best friend has died in a car accident. The day of reckoning is here, and it's bringing bad, bad, bad news for the wicked. 
that they can't take in their stride but they not but that they nonetheless have to endure do you understand Jela? Lang twar. Lang graspa. Ish, it's lang bora, guys, man. Yo. I know, Shem. Lost cause. It is no wonder nature ends up being a. Morwa upinzi. Because Oda ezang wana bat. Hmm. Oda ezang. When you keep looking at the only person that does not want to cast a spell on all of y'all, you keep looking. <laughs> Nature keeps on looking at you, looking at that one only person, Osale Loying, with y'all looking at her like she's the lost cause. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the same look I have on my face, Nature got it too. Nature's also looking at you like Garnetti. You you think Ugutukara was the lost cause? Cause she's she's outnumbered? Yeah, no, but it did it is written in God's word that there'll be a, a departing from the faith, a great falling away in the last days. So her being outnumbered is, is frankly kind of, you know, prophetic. It's been predicted that she's going to be a remnant. Few and far between, sparsely scattered, barely findable, as with a microscope only can you identify her. Like, it's gonna be hard to find real saints in these streets. I mean, that was written in God's word, so why are you acting shocked? Why are you acting surprised when she's the only one out of her whole family and former friends? Osa Loyang Bato on the left and on the right. Why under heaven are you out here looking all shook? Chilling on a mountain top, freezing, Gadi Horisi, with great concern, pulling out every last one of your hairs about the fact that Garab was the only one among you on the narrow road that leads to life that was predicted to be, yeah, indeed, let's say it together now, few people on it will find it. The road is narrow that leads to life and only few people find it. So, I mean, when there's only one out of 20 people out here trying to love the king, I don't be surprised. I mean, it's unfortunate, but unfortunate or not, it's nonetheless a prophesied reality. It is a fact that most people go to hell. So, why are you out here acting all frazzled and confused? When Cran K be the only one out here going to heaven, especially in 2024, which is the last days. But no, I'm a lost cause. It is no wonder creation is just having a really hard time waking up in the morning. It's got depression. It's suffering from anxiety. It out here is looking forward to nothing. There is so much despair. Because it's wagging its head. Every single day, watching the majority of the human race in 2024 wake up and wear a skirt as a man oh goodness then do a tiktok video wearing a wig as a man oh goodness then do another tiktok video priding yourself in having cast a spell on the nyatsi of your husband because apparently you taking matters into your own hands makes you the better person given that your husband wasn't supposed to cheat so she had it coming yeah creation looks at all that and is like uh, uh. creation looks at all that and then prefers to rather be near garabo but the disquieting thing about creation is that largely it's inanimate. Unlike a cat that can walk from today from here to next door. Uh, some creation just gotta stay where you put it, man. This toilet roll gotta just stay where I put it. Bible gotta just stay where I put it. This pillow is stuck on me unless I move it over there. So some of y'all's creation are the brick and mortar houses that you live in. Oh, if these walls could talk. Some of y'all's creation are the vases on your kitchen counters. Some creation are cats belonging to you and dogs. Oh. Some creation are the clothes on your body. Oh. Some creation is the hair on your own head. It's your own skin. It's the atoms making up you as a human being. So basically your own body is uh, betrayed by you. Your soul is crying out for redemption, but you're in denial about going to hell. Some creation is the bed on which you lie at night on Zohona tossing and turning with what you did. That this bed 
if it could talk would be like puma upele get off me i don't like you you stink i don't know what's wrong with you like get out of my hair get out of my skirt get out of my atomic structure but creation can't quite tell you to get off it as a chair now can it so it has to be subjugated to the tyranny of you sitting on it but the day's gonna come when creation gonna be at you acting all up in your grill like it don't want you because god is gonna make you come at you it's finally gonna get at you it's gonna spit you out and give you the dystopia that you created that you imagined was a utopia yeah creation is going to finally be like yeah now is my time it's gonna roll up its sleeves and do this and then start to go bah, and ransack you you will no longer have a chair on which to sit yo you ain't no longer gonna have a bed on which to lay yo you ain't never gonna have no food in the mouth to eat yo your clothes ain't no more gonna be on your body yo because there will be no place for you found anymore ultimately creation is gonna get its own but not first before churn the living god are in safe vantage points right next to god until we're in safe posture until we're good until we've arrived and we're in the hood until such time that we're right next to the king of the universe only then is creation going to be like on you allow me to read you that portion in the lord's words just in case you didn't believe me it's written in God's amazing word in Revelation 20 ooh, correction correction it's written in Revelation 20 20 all right Revelation 20 from verse 11 judgment before the great white throne hallelujah say it with me now but I guess you won't because you don't like Jesus okay uh okay then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. Like he guesses anybody as to who that might be. Yeah, your maker. Okay, then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it. From his presence, listen, this is when the earth finally vomits you because what were you doing all this time? What? What? Okay from his presence earth and sky fled away and no place was found for them and i saw the dead great and small standing before the throne and books were opened then another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done and the sea gave up the dead that who were in it the sea of which is where hmm? it fled away with all of creation with the earth I get it. but it's gonna first before it flees from the sight of god blah, make like a bulimic and just vomit all of you dead randos out mm. death and hades which it is believed is in the center of the earth it's also gonna be like blah, on some footy i mean and tandy anyway and it's gonna give up the dead that are in it i mean if at all creation is finally gonna get to the point where it's kicking you to the curb because you don't get to sit on me in a mouth why do you think i'm the lost cause because where are the saints when all this is happening let's keep reading mm. then another book was opened which is the book of life and the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done and the sea gave up the dead who were in it death and hades gave up the dead who were in them and they were judged each one according to what they had done then death and hades were thrown into the lake of fire that is the second death the lake of fire and if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life he was thrown into the lake of fire then i saw a new heaven this is now from revelation 21 and then i saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more and i saw the holy city new jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god prepared as a bride listen to this adorned for her husband and i heard a loud voice from the throne saying behold listen this is my dwelling place now this is where it is that i is gonna be forever that acknowledged her king while living on the old earth under the old heaven and i heard a loud voice from the throne saying behold 
the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, no crying, no pain anymore for the former things have passed away. That stuff that was everybody's pet peeve that loved God. That stuff that made us wag our heads on some, why do you think I'm the lost cause? Why? Why does anyone think I'm the lost cause? Yeah, that's the thing. You make me cry. You make me want to throw my pager out the window. Sell my house so I can move because you a bugaboo, a bugaboo. You make me sad. Creation sees that. Creation agrees with me. Creation presently can't do anything about it other than rattle a little bit. Other than earthquake a little bit. Yeah, but the day's going to come when creation is told to just vomit you then go away. And then there's going to be a new place created where your fingerprints are no longer there. Your footprints, your DNA, nowhere to be found. It's made for us who honor God only. None of your anything is going to be found anymore. You will have been thrown in the lake of fire for the sake of death. And there you'll burn forever and ever. And just like it's written in Isaiah 66, we're then going to watch you as a tourist destination burn. Mm, but Ukarabo, who's presently crying, who's presently sorrowful, that you're presently trying to kill with suicide, that you're presently harassing, that you are presently giving a really rough time. Mm, yeah, it is written that my place is now going to be with God. And then the Lord is going to wipe away every tear from my eye. I will no longer be killed over and over again with your suicide curses. And neither shall I ever cry again, mourn, no crying, and there will be no more pain. For the former things have passed away, including all of you. They were in deep denial at your calling me the lost cause. This is how this rather ends. So I can show who really fat little nana on re literally accommodate that Saruri who relinky like I die ideology. I don't know where you done gotten that theory. I am of grand confusion here. I'm creasing my forehead, really. I am very, very, very confused. It is excruciatingly confusing to comprehend why anybody under heaven that is that diabolical, that nefarious, and in a groupthink mentality telling themselves each other, oh, there is safety in numbers. There is safety in numbers. Yeah. Clumping together as a groupthink, like little caucus of darkness, anticipating that because it's like 20 million of you against two or three saints in the room, that were the lost causes, I'm sorry. Like that level of evil cannot be sustained. It's why the world comes to a blistering end because of the tribulation. It ends because all that nefariousness, all that wickedness, all that worship of a mere mortal or a mere created being, it just doesn't end well. It doesn't end well. Even if the saints of the living God are excruciatingly outnumbered, look at the Jews. They're a small number, little, a small little tiny population on the earth, like barely uh, noticeable under even a microscope. Yet because they're God's apple of the eye and everything, they have been maintained in their heritage all the way since the very beginning to now. They have not been diluted from being scattered across the world. They've been restored to their land in the Middle East. And one day they're going to grab back all the lands around there that ascertain that they did not have all of Canaan given them, right? Because they have been splitting their land and everything. They're a cup of trembling. They're a force to be reckoned with. Mm. Because God chose them, even though they're severely outnumbered. They are so terribly hated that there is a term created for what under heaven it is that afflicts them called anti-Semitism and it is a global epidemic and it is increasing measure today, uh, ramping up. Do you understand? Yeah. People of God will perpetually be harassed and scraped until, until, frankly, there is no place left for everyone on Wabang, those that acknowledge their maker is out the way the majority of the world goes to hell y'all it's a sore point and a painful thing to acknowledge but it is true because man is born hating god they are dead in trespasses and sins and in sins did their parents conceive them none of them none of them do good no not even one for all of them have, have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god Therefore, they hate disciples and they can't stand everybody that is out you acknowledging their creator as such. They can't stand 
believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was the word who dwelt among us, that was the word who became flesh and dwelt among us, who in and of himself was God. For in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. John 1, 1, okay? Mm. We who acknowledge that maker are a small minority. So much so that Honate you got John 1. It is written that his own people did not recognize him. The word who became flesh and dwelt among us came down, hung out with people in these streets, and then they rejected him. Mm. He was in the world and the world was made through him. This is from John 1.10. He was in the world and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. Mm? Matthew 7. Depart from me, work of iniquity. I never knew you. Yeah, God gotta know you for you to enter heaven. And yet so very many people he does not know and neither do they know him. Mm. He was in the world and the world was made through him yet the world did not know him he came to his own and his own people did not receive him but to all who did receive him who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of god who were born who were born not of blood nor of the will of the flesh nor of the will of man but of god that is the word who became flesh that dwelt among us otherwise known as jesus christ jehovah's witnesses move on okay yeah that's what's good right oh mm. So seeing as the majority of people don't acknowledge this wonderful savior, it is no wonder a whole planet of people, the planet of which was created through him, don't appreciate the breath in their lungs because they take it for granted thinking that the one who created this world is going to suffer them indefinitely. Jesus is doing no other thing but gathering for himself a people for his own possession. Once he has gathered for us, for himself, us, as his bride, Y'all don't got to be here no more. Neither does this earth have to be around anymore. Neither is it going to be salvaged. Why? Because it's got your fingerprints. It's got your sechotelas. It's got your filth. It's got your fecal matter. It's got all of your DNA. And all that which belongs to you must be burned as through the fire. It has to go. So the new earth and the new heaven, the old earth, old heaven, sorry, gotta go. So that we, in a brand spanking new ecosystem where none of your DNA exists, can then now dwell in this place where every last iota of creation every last hair follicle and every last skin cell out here be worshiping god there will be not even a single rebellious soul not even dead or alive like there will not be anything dead anymore because nothing will die in that place but you get my point those of y'all who will be dying a second death in the lake of iron you are not going for crying out loud going to you're not going to be allowed to hang out in the new space because you muddied the old one so much and took it for granted that as much of an abhorrence as you were to god he had to get rid of you all together with your old earth and all of your dna on it that's how god extracts and yet being that voluptuously rejected by your maker you think i am the lost cause creation groans to see me revealed because i see basic stuff like that because we see basic stuff like that as believers it is written in god's word as well that angels also look at us curiously like huh uh, yeah that's angels because we're weird humanity why here it is that you've got this amazing savior this amazing God that gave you everything. And every single day his common grace is poured out on the earth. Like confetti. Hey. And then la mo ngapela. Nyam kaflela. You kick him. You throw your toys at the cot. You blaspheme. And then man that you round up his saints and you kill them. I mean of course angels are going to look at you like. What are they doing? But anyway. I'm here charged concerning that saint that they're trying to kill i'm just gonna do what god will have me do but frankly these guys i so you know why angels look at us curiously at the world curiously alongside creation groaning to see the sons and daughters of god revealed it is because of the fact that even demons entities fallen angels spirits of a diabolical nature even they tremble before god hey eh? 
they send that first fell upon but ever since then they be at your shaking they go to jesus on some son of man what do you want with us what will you have to do with us please don't take us to that place take us to the pigs Ugh. you believe you do nothing spectacular demons believe and they tremble that's what it's written in God's word. So basically, demons are more pious even than human beings. It is no wonder angels, holy angels, look on the human race with curiosity because we lack a piety that even fallen, nefarious, diabolical, absolutely zotsy spirits, yeah, have. They, we, we lack a piety that they have. We, as human beings, lack a piety that fallen angels have. There is literally nothing on earth, nothing, and by nothing I mean nothing on earth that is as disrespectful of their maker as the human race. Nothing else is that disrespectful. Not demons, not fallen angels, not the air, not the sun, not the cows, not the pigs, not the dogs, not the hair follicles on your head, just you. There is nothing more disrespectful of its maker, their maker, than human beings. So the fact that he lingers and suffers you long, it proves John 3.16. John 3.16, it is written, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomsoever shall believe upon him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God loves you. It's like having a brat for a child. You're not going to throw that kid away into an orphanage because, you know, they're out here throwing their toys out the cot at the mall, spinning on the floor, unprepared to go home, spoiling everybody's day because you would not buy them a toy. You're not going to throw that, 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 that Dumbo child away. You're going to take it home, kicking and screaming. Because you want to how? You're just going to ride them out and hope that one day they will turn around. But there comes a time when a kid, upon not turning their faces back to their mom or dad, appreciating how long-suffering their mom or dad were, when moms and dads get to a point where they essentially disown a child. I've tried. When you, for instance, become a whole junkie and you start stealing TVs in the house and you start stealing beds and spoons and money from your mom's purse in order to go and feed your drug habit, there comes a time when your mother's not going to let you come into the house. When, when you get home, your mom will call the police on you and you will get arrested. There comes a time when a kid can drive a parent up the wall until Lom Zali is like, I'm done. It takes a lot for a parent to get there. It takes a lot. Especially if they're full of love and not full of neglect and abandonment unnecessarily like my mom. Because there's parents in Jephthah that drop the ball just because they can. Yeah. But a parent that has tried, yeah, it's very hard for them to let go of that kind of a junkie kid. And God, yeah, you to him at some point become like the junkie kid. He will finally call the popo on you. He will finally extract you out of the earth. He will finally let you go to hellfire. He will finally just kick you out because you won't stop selling his tv for drugs that's what you are you are an irresponsible no-brainer but that is being endured lingered sat around in the presence of just kind of taken in one stride for literally way longer than you deserve and so by the time you get flushed down a toilet like fecal matter you had it coming and I had vision upon vision upon vision, back to back, yo. Mm. Seeing dangling legs of some women. Because they had hung themselves on a noose. They finally committed suicide. Because God left them to so much depression that they, in their attempt to kill a saint, ended up killing themselves. I need to go and pee before I read from Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26.